I'm a play designer. For the last 15 years, I've been designing tools and environments for play. I'm proud to be able to say that, to my knowledge, I have not contributed to this world of pink and blue toys that surrounds us. Thank you. My conscience is clear. I'm going to tell you why I think we have a problem on our hands and what we can do to move forward. But first, let me tell you a story. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine went to Arizona. Yeah, he's a Swedish-American guy, kind of new to the place. I was surprised to hear that they have separate Happy Meals there for boys and girls. Apparently, it's a thing. So he went to the drive-thru and was asked, is it boys and girls? He's like, what? In the car, do you have boys or girls? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, OK. Well, it, it turns out that the boys get um, a toy rocket, and the girls get a cute horse. His reaction was, why limit my children like that? Why not just ask them what they want? My reaction was, wouldn't it be like having separate Happy Meals for black children and white children? You go up to the drive through and are asked, do you have black children or white children? <laughs> what? Do you have black children or white children in the car? Why would you want to know? The black children get a basketball. The white children get a rocket. <laughs> oh, OK. No, not OK, right? But why do we accept that kind of black and white thinking when it comes to gender? How did we get here? Well, let me take you way back. <laughs> this is a toy horse from 900 BC from Syria. So perhaps it's the kind of toy that Cleopatra or Caesar played with us children. Not unimaginable. Now, fast forward 3,000 years. <laughs> Somehow, we got to the consensus that horses are for girls. And so no one even tries to market uh, horse-related toys to boys. But however, the idea that horses are for girls isn't a, complete natural, a completely natural one. I know that because I grew up in two different cultures uh, that had very different perspectives on this. I spent my winters in Sweden, and there I would go with my sister to the stable. And I found it was all women and girls, 100%. They would talk mostly about feeding the horses, grooming them, their personalities. They would also ride them at breakneck speed through the forest. This is scary stuff for me, at least, when I saw it. But a lot of the focus of the conversations were about the caretaking. Now, in Spain, where I was uh, in the summers, I would go with my dad to the stables. And there, it was all men. And they would talk about how far the horses could go before they got tired. Or um, if they're young, how to best break them in, or places to go that are cool. Now, is hanging out with horses an action sport? Or is it about taking care of an animal? Well, it's both, right? So depending on what you focus on, the same activity can be seen as apt for men or for women. And the ones who lose out are Spanish girls and Swedish boys. <laughs> they don't get to experience one of the most beautiful things in life. And that's the wonderful friendship that can flourish between an animal and a human. In this case, a horse. So if culture is one thing that acts upon dividing play, another one is psychology, or the willpower of little girls to be the most pink in the world. This is my daughter, Sasha. <laughs> and she will wear nothing but pink. She talks about princesses all day and about how stupid the boys are. <laughs> For her, being a girl is like being on a team. And it's great. It gives her an identity. It tells her how to act, how to talk, what songs to sing, what to play, and who to play with. But when you're on a team, that can be limiting also, because 
You can't do what the other team does so much. You can't hang out with them as much. Children seem to know this starting at age about three. The research has proved this by putting boys alone in a room with uh, three traditional boy toys and three traditional girl toys. And when they were by themselves, they would spend their time sort of 80-20 between the two. But when other people, other children were in the room, the boys wouldn't even look at the girls' toys. Now, I think that's a problem. Why can't we play with the same toys if we feel like it? What do we do? Well, in the toy industry right now, there's a trend to take an area of play that's been traditionally for boys or traditionally for girls and market it to the other gender. And that could seem like a step forward, and it is in a way. What someone might do is you take science, for instance, and you build a big pink rocket. And you say, okay, let's have a story about horses so that girls get even more into it. And maybe that works. It is a step forward in a sense. But it's, it's also a few steps back. Because what you're telling girls is this science toy is for you. The other ones, not so much. Now, you're also telling girls you need a story about horses to get into science. <laughs> and the reverse is true for boys who might enjoy a more humanistic approach to technology and who could benefit from a story about horses, well, they're not even going to want to touch that toy because it's pink. So let me give you a couple of ideas for how we can move forward. Well, the first one is, before you design any toy that's pink for girls or boys, think. Because what you do, in essence, is you're creating a blue shadow by telling the other set of kids this toy maybe even this whole area of toys isn't for you. The second thing is try to be real. What I mean by that is what you're looking at here is an app by the biggest company in children's culture. And it's, the area of play here is hair. And all of the characters are thin, beautiful, full set of hair looking down towards the ground. Might be what you expect. Now what we did with our team is we tried to change that up. Because when I walk around in my neighborhood in Brooklyn, I see an equal amount of men and women getting their haircut. And I also see an equal amount of men and women giving those haircuts. And the reality is not everyone's beautiful. Someone might have crooked teeth, red nose because they have a cold, or whatever it might be. And children like this, they recognize the real. So you'll be happy to hear that the app at the bottom does about 20 times better than the one at the top. The world is diverse, probably more diverse than you imagine it. And a lot of people are working very hard to make it more so. We need more female police officers. We need more male teachers. We need more women rocket scientists. We need more men who say, hey, don't worry, I'll stay home this year. You go out and start that company. And that's why I dream of a playroom full of little girls and boys who feel truly free, free to reach for any toy, free to follow their instincts, free to follow their wills, free to practice being whoever they want to be, free to imagine anything. It is time we build, design, and market toys that are inclusive to all children. They were born free. It is time we give them that freedom back. Thank you.